Welcome to Lucid Mind Chemistry channel. In this video, I have compiled questions related to properties of oxides of period 3 elements such as solubility, pH, reaction with water, melting points, etc. For similar topics and question timestamps, read video description. Question 16. Sodium, magnesium and aluminium are three elements in the period 3 of the periodic table. Each element forms an oxide. Which row is correct? So first one is A. Sodium oxide. It is basic. Yes, metal oxides are basic in nature. Magnesium oxide. It is also basic in nature. So this is wrong. Aluminium oxide is amphoteric. This is correct. Now the structure of sodium oxide is giant ionic. Yes, it is an ionic compound, so the structure is giant ionic. Similarly, magnesium oxide is also an ionic compound, so the structure is giant ionic. Aluminium oxide is also a giant ionic compound. So this is wrong. Simple molecular is wrong. Now sodium oxide has a high melting point. Obviously, when the structure is giant ionic, so the melting point should also be high. Same for magnesium oxide, the melting point is high. But it says the low melting point, so this is wrong because aluminum oxide is also giant ionic and it, the melting point is very high. Now the fourth point is sodium oxide readily reacts with water. Yes. It reacts with water and produces sodium hydroxide. Magnesium oxide slight reaction with water. Yes, it is correct. And it forms magnesium hydroxide with water. Aluminium oxide has no reaction with water. as It is stable to the dissolution or reaction with H2O. So the answer is part D. Question 16. Sodium, aluminum and silicon are three elements in period 3. Each element forms an oxide. Which row has three correct properties of these oxides? Sodium oxide. Now sodium oxide is a metal oxide and it is basic in nature. Sodium oxide the bonding is ionic. So it is giant ionic structure. The melting point is also very high for the ionic compounds. And the reactivity with water is, yes, it is reactive and it forms alkaline solution of sodium hydroxide. For aluminum oxide, we know that it is amphoteric in nature. So this is wrong. It is giant ionic. Yes, because it is an ionic compound with aluminum ions and oxide ions. The melting point is also very high. So this is wrong. And there is no reaction with water because it is insoluble. So this is true. Third one is silicon dioxide. It is acidic in nature, not amphoteric. It is simple molecular. This is wrong because it is giant covalent compound. It has a high melting point. This is true. And it also does not react with water. So the correct option seems to be D. Question 15. Which element when burned in oxygen can form an oxide that is a reducing agent? Sodium will form sodium oxide. Magnesium will form magnesium oxide. Aluminum will form aluminum oxide. And sulfur will form sulfur dioxide. In these compounds, we can find the oxidation state. Sodium is in plus 1. Magnesium is in plus 2 oxidation state. Aluminum is in plus 3. And sulfur is in plus 4. You should remember this statement that any normal oxide in which the metal or the other non-metal is in its highest possible oxidation state cannot be further oxidized. The oxidation state of sodium in sodium oxide is maximum so therefore it cannot be further oxidized. So it is not sodium oxide. Similarly magnesium oxide the maximum oxidation state is plus 2 and it is already achieved so it cannot be further oxidized. 
Similarly, aluminum cannot be further oxidized. Now, sulfur dioxide has the ability to actually reduce nitrogen dioxide into NO and itself get oxidized to sulfur trioxide. In SO3, sulfur has plus 6 oxidation state. So the only possible option which can further oxidize itself or behave as a reducing agent is sulfur. So the answer is D. Question 36. When added to water, which oxide will not cause a change in pH? One is aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide does not dissolve in water, so it won't change the pH. So this could be correct. Silicon dioxide is also insoluble in water and it won't change the pH. While phosphorus oxide is acidic oxide and it will decrease the pH of water. So the correct options are 1 and 2 and the answer is B. Question number 12. X, Y and Z are elements in period 3 of the periodic table. The results of some experiments carried out with compounds of these elements are shown in this table. So we have X. First is the resulting addition of oxide to water. Second is the adding of chloride to water. Third is the result of adding oxide to HCl. Which statement could be? correct finding out the first one a says x is aluminum so the result of adding the oxide of aluminum to water there is no reaction as aluminum oxide is insoluble in water so there is no chemical reaction so therefore this is correct for aluminum now the second reaction is of aluminum chloride with h2o so we can write AlCl3 plus H2O. This reaction is a hydrolysis reaction in which aluminum plus 3 is formed along with H plus ions. The third is the reaction of oxide with HCl. So aluminum oxide reacts with HCl to form salt and water so x is aluminum this is correct y is magnesium so finding out the reaction of magnesium with water it forms magnesium hydroxide so this is true for magnesium Magnesium chloride reaction with water, it dissolves. Magnesium chloride is water soluble, so this, therefore this is also correct. Third one is that magnesium oxide reacts with HCl to form salt. As magnesium chloride salt is formed, so therefore this is also correct for magnesium. So X could be aluminum and Y could be magnesium. Mo moving towards option B, X is silicon. First is there is no reaction of silicon dioxide with water. This is true. Second is that silicon chloride will hydrolyze in water. SiCl4 reacts with water to form silicon dioxide and HCl so this is also true for silicon third is that the oxide of silicon reacts with HCl to form chloride so silicon dioxide plus HCl as silicon dioxide is acidic in nature and HCl is also acidic in nature so the reaction will not occur so therefore B is incorrect for option C, it says Y is aluminum. Aluminum oxide forms hydroxide with H2O, so this is incorrect. As aluminum oxide is insoluble in water and it does not react. D says Y is sodium and Z is aluminum. Finding out the reaction of sodium 
in Y, we have sodium oxide plus water, it forms sodium hydroxide. So this is correct for sodium. Second is NaCl is soluble in water. As we know that NaCl is a common salt, so it is soluble in water to form sodium ions and chloride ions. So it is also true for the second one. Third is that the oxide of sodium will react with HCl to form chloride. So Na2O is basic in nature. It will react with acid to form salt along with water. So this is correct for sodium. So why is sodium is correct? Then let's move towards Z. Z is aluminum. The first one is that aluminum oxide reacts with water to form acid. As we know that aluminum oxide does not react with water so therefore this is incorrect. So therefore the only correct option is A. Question number 13. A solid period 3 element Q is reacted with oxygen gas a compound R is formed. When R is added to water, the pH decreases. What could be the empirical formula of R? In the question, they have given a solid from period 3 which forms oxide upon reaction with oxygen gas and compound R is actually oxide of period 3. In period 3, we have sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine. All of them are solids except chlorine, so therefore chlorine is not element Q. Second point is that when R is added to water, the pH decreases. It means that the oxide that is formed is acidic in nature. Acidic oxide is the oxide of non-metal oxides. So it means it is not sodium, it is not magnesium. As these are basic oxides, the oxide of aluminum is amphoteric in nature, so it is not aluminum oxide. So only options left are silicon, phosphorus and sulfur. If it is silicon, then silicon reacts with oxygen to form SiO2. If it is phosphorus, it reacts with oxygen to form P4O10. If it is sulfur, it will react with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide or sulfur trioxide. Now we can write the empirical formula considering this these elements as Q. So the empirical formula for SiO2 will be QO2 as it is the simple ratio. 1 ratio 2 and it cannot be simplified further. For second one it will be 2 ratio 5. So the compound formed will be Q2O5. For third one it will be QO2 or QO3. Let's look at the given options. We have this one similar. This is not the empirical formula, it is the molecular formula. So therefore, option B is correct. Question 13. X and Y are elements in period 3 of the periodic table. The oxide of X is solid at room temperature. The oxide has a giant structure. The chloride of X does not react with water. Argon is the only element in period 3 with a lower melting point than Y. What could be the formula of compound form between element X and element Y? The elements in period 3 are sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon. The oxides formed by these elements that have giant structure are sodium oxide, magnesium oxide, 
aluminum oxide silicon dioxide while the oxide of phosphorus and sulfur have simple molecular structures these oxides are also solid at room temperature so x could be sodium magnesium aluminum or silicon second point is the chloride of x does not react with water the chloride of sodium is nacl for magnesium it is mgcl2 aluminum chloride is alcl3 silicon chloride is sicl4 now sodium chloride and magnesium chloride are ionic compounds and they do not react with water while aluminum chloride and silicon chloride they do react with water to form acidic solutions so element x could be sodium or magnesium now let's find out which is element y the third point says that argon is the only element in period 3 with a lower melting point than y it means that y is also a gas so therefore it should be chlorine so the formula between x and y could be sodium chloride or magnesium chloride as only sodium chloride is given the answer is therefore c thanks for watching if this was useful please do like subscribe and share